Hi everybody, it's Camille at Physiology for Hippies. We look at a different topic every month and this month we are doing the blood vessels. So this is our first video, which is a basic introduction to make sure that we're all on the same page before we go into a little more detail later. So when a lot of people think about blood vessels, uh, they think that they think about tubes that bring blood different places in the body, kind of like the highway system of the body. And that is true to a certain degree. One of the things that blood vessels do is help blood deliver oxygen and nutrients to all the tissues of the body and they help remove carbon dioxide and other waste from tissues so that we can um, you know, breathe out the carbon dioxide or remove waste via the liver and the kidneys. So that is all true, but the blood vessels are so much more than tubes. And in fact, what the blood vessels are doing is they're directly interacting with the blood and um, making adjustments. So the blood vessels can change how big they are. They can respond to local conditions as well as uh, signals that affect the whole body. And there's all kinds of different signaling and different um, interactions going on with between the blood and the blood vessel that are really interesting. So we're gonna be having a look at all of that this month. And in a good example of one that, that a lot of people are interested in is the effects of sodium, high sodium diet. One of the reasons that um, high sodium can be bad for you is that, it, that the sodium in the blood directly affects the blood vessels. So we'll be having a look at all of that. Now you can see here from this little chart, there are two, what, we, what we call circuits that, um, that affect the body. One of them is the pulmonary circuit where the heart pumps blood to the left and the right lung to pick up more oxygen and then it comes back to the heart where it's pumped um, throughout the body to all the tissues so it can deliver oxygen and nutrients and remove wastes. Okay so that's called the systemic circuit when it's going throughout the body. Now there are different types of blood vessels. You're definitely going to want to know uh, the basics here to follow along this month. First of all, um, I've written them all out here, but arteries and arterioles, you can remember these because they both start with A, and those these are the primary vessels that are leading blood away from the heart. So the aorta is the big vessel that's going out of the heart towards the rest of the body. And arteries are what we call a divergent system meaning they get progressively smaller and smaller. So they split into smaller branches and then even smaller branches. And essentially the goal of the arteries is to get into every single tissue of the body. And eventually they get small enough to be called arterioles. Now the arteries themselves experience the highest pressure of all the blood vessels because they're so close to the heart, right? So the heart pumps and the arteries really have to absorb that high pressure. They have a lot of muscle for that reason. Arterioles, which are just smaller arteries, are really cool because they are very responsive to the tissue. So the arterioles have smooth muscle that allows, the, allows them to get bigger if the tissue they're serving needs more blood so that more blood can rush into the tissue. And if that tissue doesn't really need a lot of blood right then, the arterioles can constrict, which shunts blood to other parts of the body that might need it more. And we'll talk a lot more about that um, in future lessons as well. Then we get to everybody's favorite type of blood vessel, which is the capillaries. And the capillaries are the smallest blood vessel. They're found in virtually every tissue in the body. And this is where all the action takes place. So the capillaries are just big enough for one little red blood cell to squeeze through. It has to kind of bend over in order to squeeze through. Sorry about my drawings. So, yeah, a little sketchy. Um, huh, literally. Anyway, so the red blood, well, red blood cells are coming through and they're going through the capillaries actually relatively slowly. And this allows oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse in and out of the capillary and other nutrients to cross in and out of the bloodstream. So the capillaries are considered relatively leaky and they're kind of a, um, you know, the whole point of the blood vessels is to deliver nutrients to the tissues and this is where it's all happening. So after the capillaries, all of that blood needs to make its way back to the heart so it can get circulated again. So the capillaries start joining together with other capillaries from other parts of the body and they turn into what are called venules. And then the venules start to join up with other venules into larger vessels and these larger vessels are called veins. So veins are just blood vessels that are on their way back to the heart so they have less oxygen 
um, in the venous blood than we do in the arterial blood. It's not actually completely gone, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. So we have two big veins that ultimately feed into the heart called the vena cava. Okay, so those are the basic types of blood vessels. Now, I want to have a quick look at the structure of these vessels because there's some kind of interesting features that we'll be talking about more later. So if we look at a basic, um, a basic structure, we can see here they are kind of like a tube and the middle of the tube, which is where the blood would be flowing, is called the lumen. And that's a generic term for the middle of any tube. So for example, the middle of the digestive tract is also called the digestive lumen. And the interface, the cells that actually interface with the blood are these little cells right here called the endothelial cells. They make up the endothelium. And you can see they're just one little cell thick, but they're really um, very cool. And we're gonna be talking uh, more extensively in the next few weeks about the endothelium and how it interacts with the blood. Beneath the endothelium, we have just a layer of structural proteins that provide some scaffolding for the blood vessel. And then in the arteries and arterioles, we have a thicker layer of smooth muscle. And that allows the arteries to kind of absorb some of the pressure and it allows the arterioles to adjust their diameter based on how much blood is needed in the downstream tissues. Oops. Now, um, and then beneath the, the muscular layer, we just have some more um, kind of structural layers, okay? Okay, so let's look at some of the differences here. So this is just another type of diagram, another way to look at things. So we can see that the heart is pumping the blood this way through the lumen. The endothelium is here, this little layer. And then beneath the endothelium, a little deeper, we have our smooth muscle because this is an artery. And then we have some structural, the basement membrane here and this... Um, adventitia and the other structural pieces that hold it all together. The art arteries split into smaller arterioles and then the arterioles eventually become capillaries. Okay and you can see that capillaries are um, they're kind of a web-like structure that they fan out to try and reach all the tissues. And if this tissue, let's say this tissue didn't really need a lot of blood right now, you could actually close off, there's these little, what we call um, thoroughfares or met arterioles, and you can actually close off these openings so that blood doesn't go through some of these capillaries and shunt the blood directly into the venules. So that's kind of a handy feature, right? Uh, and then the, uh, on the way back to the heart, we have venules that come together to form veins. And the vein, uh, the venous blood is working its way back to the heart. You can see here that the veins don't have a lot of smooth muscle compared to the arteries, but they do have these handy little valves that, um, that helps the blood move upwards without a lot of pressure. All right, so that's, those are the basics. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm looking forward to our next little lecture.